Hi, welcome back to Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit. In this video, I'm going to have a bit of fun with this machine. I've just had this outside actually, I've had it a couple of weeks now. Um, and normally, things like this that have been sat outside, it's, uh, there's either water in the fuel or whatever, and I can normally get these going. So, I've checked for spark and I've got that. Um, I've put the, taken all the old fuel out and put some new in. I've also just drained out the carb from underneath, just to let any stale fuel out. And I can pull it over nice and easy, it's actually quite easy to pull over, but there's you know, a decent amount of compression there. So, it's like a, a timing issue, I've got spark, I've got nice clean fuel in, so the next thing I generally look at is, um, if I think the timing might be out, is I'll look underneath here. I'll just look at these two pins here, that if you can see there, these two pins, so either side of the, that centre bolt there is still in position on the blade boss there, so normally if they're smashed off, there's a, there is a chance that the... Uh, the flywheel key at the bottom underneath will be smashed as well. But with those two still being there, I'm, I'm thinking really, it's, it'd be very unlucky to smash a flywheel key and not smash those two off. Pretty impossible. So the only other options I'm left with is um, on the top there's a flywheel key. So it seems like a timing issue. Either that or something like the, uh, the governor flat might have gone wrong in here. So I'm going to put it on the bench in a second and have a look. Yeah, I've got good spark. So all the normal checks I normally do on these... Uh, RV or SV150 engines. The normal culprit is this little switch as well. You can hear that click when I pull the handle as well. Sometimes I get those that stick to stop the safety from being released. So um, it's going to need a little bit more investigation. This one, I'm going to put this one on the bench over here. I've just been doing a bit of uh, tidying up, believe it or not. Just uh, cleaned all my sockets off and things like that and put everything back in place. I'm going to put this on the bench. I think we'll just remove this starter recoil cover and just take a look inside, make sure that there's nothing uh, fallen to bits in there. So I've just undone these three Phillips head screws, one, two and three at the back. And to get this recoil off you have to remove this petrol cap just to lift it over the top. Move that out of the way. Beginning to get in here, you need three. Take a 10mm socket, there's just three of these to undo. We'll just lift this recoil off and we'll just take a look under here and check there's nothing uh, that's come loose. Off. Still a little bit wet actually, I've just been outside this afternoon, I've actually just cleaned these off with a pressure washer. To be careful not to take the paint off when you do that, don't have it on the highest setting. I always like to clean them off with a pressure washer before I bring anything in the garage. It just saves getting a lot of grass everywhere and making a mess of the uh, working space that you're going to be using. The last thing you want is to bring it in and have grass and mud and things everywhere. Get it cleaned off and then you've got it... Uh, it's a lot easier to work on, and a lot less mess inside. So you're having to sweep your garage out and things. I'll take these three off. I mean, this could be something as simple as the uh, one of the springs not not connecting or something like that. But I mean, it could just be that I need to take the carb off and things like that. And I'll do that in the video anyway if it needs doing. But um, I always look for the simple things first, the quick fix. Don't want to ever get too in depth before we get anywhere else. We'll take that off. Just remove this. Sometimes you see this governor flap is broken at the bottom, all the springs aren't connected, but uh, everything in there looks okay. And the uh, the magneto here against the flywheel, that looks to be set okay, it doesn't look to be uh, too tight. There's actually a little, you can just see a little gap, a little bit of daylight in between those. So, I think what I probably will do for good measure, seeing as I'm already here, is I'll actually just take this air filter box off here. I'm going to take this carb off, it looks quite dirty on top, I'm not sure what's going on inside. I think just uh, while I'm here and I've got everything off it would be silly not to service the carb really, so I think I'll just take this carb off. So I've pulled this fuel line off the back, I'm just going to clamp this as well, just for good measure, really, just to keep it out of the way more than anything. As long as it stays uh, pointing up in the air and it's above, it's above the level where it can spill out, it should be absolutely fine, so we'll just keep that out of the way. Just a quick tip as well actually, if you haven't got any little clamps like that and you don't want to drain the fuel out, just pull it off and just get yourself a, just get yourself a, a threaded screw or something like that, just put it in. Basically just, just uh, you know, about a centimetre in, screw it in. And you can just move it out of the way then, it just um, stops it leaking out. So if you don't have a clamp, you're just looking for a, a cheap way to do it or a free way to do it, just put something in the end of it like that and make sure it's not leaking out. And that's out of the way now. It's always a good idea by the way when, you, when you're undoing things like this, if you're not sure where everything goes back, is just if you've got a mobile phone or even better still a camera, a decent camera, just take a photograph of the linkages before you take it apart because you always think you're going to remember and of course you never do. And as many times as I've done this before, just before I pull these two bolts out through here, through the cab, 
I'm just going to take a second just to pick my phone up here just take a few photographs just in case it's always better to be able to refer back I've got a couple of photographs here I can refer back to just in case I get stuck put my phone on one side and um, just pull these through keeping everything in a nice safe place I actually have a magnetic uh, little ball here I've used before, I just put everything in that and nothing can fall out. That does help quite a lot actually. So, just beginning to ease this off, of course there's a bolt behind here, I just have to take that one off. It's actually linked to this bracket across the front here. There's also the, uh, there's a breather pipe here that goes into the air filter. So I'll pull that one off and I'll get another 10mm uh, socket on here. Let's take this third one on here. Getting this air filter box out of the way. A little bit uh, more time consuming than the Briggs and Stratton uh, carbs of these, but uh, not too bad really. I'll just pull this out of the way, and as you can see here, just keep that to one side. This carburetor, as you can tell in here, it's very, very dirty actually. Just try and get in a bit nearer for you. You can see here, it's actually quite, uh, wants quite a good clean off. Seen worse, of course, but uh, there we go. Now, if you can see here, the linkages, this is a bit where you don't want to be. Uh, Forgetting where things go, so you see the little linkages here, so 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 easy to lose. Just try and pop that one back on there and unhook this one from the back of here if I can. I've got this carburetor here, I've got that off the uh, off the machine, so I'm going to take the ball off here and we'll have a look inside. But just before I do that, I'll just run this under my parts washer and get everything off this. So I've got it a little bit cleaner now, we'll just take this, I've actually just drained the fuel out the bottom of it, we'll just take this. Uh, this ball off and take a look inside. I actually think it's going to look too bad to be fair, but uh, yeah, it's actually uh, the ball's nice and clean. What we need to do basically, it's covered on the DVDs, this, but what I really need to do is just get a, a screwdriver in here and just move this uh, main pilot jet from inside here. There's actually a thread in there, if you can just see. We'll get a screwdriver in there and undo that. Basically, just blow it out with the air compressor and run some carb cleaner in there. And um, just make sure every little hole that's in it, I ain't got time to cover it all now, it is on the uh, on the Honda DVD, this type of carb. But um, basically I'm just going to pull that one out, blast all the air out of it and clean it with uh, carb cleaner. Check everything's seating nicely um, and we'll pop that back on. I'm going to try it again but uh, the idea of the video was just to get uh, people some help that were trying to just get the carb on and off without losing the linkages. Just show them where to go but uh, to service the carb it's, uh, it's a bit more in depth than that. So I'm going to just um, clean it off, as I've said with some carb spray, just blast it out with the compressor. Make sure it's nice and clean and we'll connect this back up. Just unscrew this as far as we can, sometimes they drop out. You can see here, try and watch this as it comes out. You've got this uh, little screw before it and the main jet above it. And all these tiny little pinholes in here, every single one of those you have to be able to see through those right to the other side if they're in alignment or if not just um, basically clean them out the best you can I've got some carb spray and this tiny little hole in here as well that has to be, yeah, make sure hold that up to the light and make sure you can see straight through there because that's what your main jet is really poking straight through there, if that's blocked up you won't get any fuel from your carburetor through towards your spark plug so I'm going to clean those out with some carb spray just clean them off with this compressor I generally just use this STP carb spray, but any carb spray should be fine. Let's give this a clean up. So I've just removed the needle and see which is down here and taken the float off and cleaned inside. Basically you've got to spray through every little hole you can see. If there's any little hole you want to get some carb spray in there. And if you've got an air compressor or even if you haven't just get a kind of air duster and just blast all these holes out because if one of those is blocked it won't work. So I've done that and I'm going to um, just put this, this uh, main jet back into the middle. Cleaned all the ball out I'm going to put that back together and put this back on the machine. Just a quick tip actually, if you can't get the main jet out, if you unscrew it and it doesn't fall out of the bottom, just take an allen key, a small allen key and just push it through here. And you'll get the short edge of the allen key down and it will push it down the hole and it will actually drop out the bottom. If you can't get it out it's probably the easiest way to do it. So it does sometimes, you can unscrew it and it doesn't come out.
Not working. Make sure everything's nice and tight, don't over tighten anything. Also I need to check the gasket on the ball, which is uh, seated on the bottom of here, which looks okay. It's a little bit off, but it's, uh, it's still okay. Still going to get a good seal. Now I know it's nice and clean. Just put this drain bolt back in the bottom of the ball of the cab. We'll tighten this back up and we'll pop this back on the machine. So we've got one nice clean cab there. I'm pretty confident that that's uh, clean everywhere it needs to be. I've had everything off that I can get off and blown it all out with a compressor and cleaned it all off with carb spray. So if that was causing me a problem, hopefully it will have rectified it now. So I'm going to attempt now to get this back on. Hopefully the linkages will go straight back on. Get your fuel line here, which is uh, where my thumb is here. Just gonna, that goes to the back. In case you can't remember, I'll hook this back one on first. I'll try and hook this one on as well. Into the front there. I've got them both in place. I'm just going to push this back. I was just struggling there because I actually had the uh, the throttle. I actually had it on the uh, choke, and it was it was just causing this mechanism to be in the way. So moving the uh, the throttle at the top on the lever. Just moved it out of the way nicely. I've got these linkages back in now. I've got a little bit of an awkward job just to put this. Uh, of course, you need to connect this airline back up on the back of this uh, this box here. I'm going to get this on. Try and get these two uh, these two long bolts back through and hold this carburetor back on. Of course, it's worth really checking all the gaskets on the carb as well are okay. If they're not, obviously, they will need replacing. Just take one of these, as long as we get one through, it's going to go right through, right through the carburetor into the mainframe on this uh, on this mower. Once you get one of them started, obviously don't tighten it right up, just get it in so it's holding all the mechanism on. And from that point on, once you've got that hold and everything, you can put your other two in, there's one there, there's a little one hiding behind here, and that will be back together. So we'll just tighten these up evenly. We're all still slack at the minute. I've reconnected this uh, this pipe at the back, which is a breather pipe as well. This air filter box. I'll tighten those up. Make sure everything's nice and tight. No other tightening anything. We've got this uh, filter box back on, of course. Simple job of putting the filter back on. I'll put the recoil back on, I'll go outside and test it. And hopefully, with any luck at all, it will have uh, solved the problems. I'll have myself a good working lawnmower. Just a little uh, no, at the end, the, uh, the DVD is still for free. It's going for free still at the website, repairinglawnmowersforprofit.com. Just fill in the startup guide on the right hand side of the home page, and you will receive a, a password. You can go on and uh, log on there and um, Get your free copy of this DVD, this Repairing Lawnmowers for Profit DVD. So, thanks for watching. Please feel free to subscribe, rate, and leave a comment. And if I get a chance, I'll take this out in the garden. It's actually dark outside now. And I'll just um, hopefully fire this up. And that'll be another good sale when the, uh, the cutting season comes round. Thanks for watching.